Good morning, class. Happy Monday. Obviously, we're going to be doing class this way the next few days. So make sure that you guys are ready to learn, ready to do what you're supposed to do, and ready to participate. One thing I just want to tell you right away is if the call ever gets a little bit laggy or doesn't seem to be working quite right, you also can always access these introductory and class videos that I'm sharing right now on my YouTube channel. I've showed you how to do that. I'm also going to link the YouTube link into announcements each day so that it should be pretty easy for you to view the video if I move too quickly or you forgot exactly what you were supposed to do or you need to watch it because you were on the call and the call got laggy or something like that. The second thing that I want to talk to you all about is the fact that we do not have a startup this week. Just going to be a little bit too challenging to do a start out on um, this week. So we're just going to eliminate the start out this week. It's a shortened week anyway, just three days. So there will be no start out this week. And then thirdly, your assignment for today. Just want to double check that everybody's turned it in. Please be aware, I might not be here, but I will still be checking your assignments from where I'm at. So I will be looking at those things. I'll still be checking email. If you do need to reach out with me, reach out to me uh, via email. I will be checking that and we'll be able to get back to you. I also will be correcting the homework assignments. So you don't have three days off where I'm not going to be looking at it anyway. I will be looking at the homework assignments and expecting those to be done on time with the same consequences if you don't get them done. So make sure you're doing it. Yes, I am talking to all of you. All right. So for today, we had looked at this Frank McCann dies. This was the story that we were looking at. Frank McCann dies. We're going to be using Savas almost exclusively over the next three days. In fact, these stories that we're looking at over the next three days, you can't even find them in your book. They're only found on Savas. So I suppose it isn't even really that necessary that you would bring your books, but it is necessary that you would have a fully charged Chromebook and you would be ready to roll with Savas. So I'm looking at our Savas assignment from the other day. From Friday, Frank McCann dies. We listened to the radio broadcast, read the transcript right here about Frank McCann and his sit-in movement in Greensboro. Now, what, what I'm expecting that you would have had turned in for today. So in on campus, you had those different comprehension and analyze the text questions that you answered and you turn them in, in on campus for today. When we were looking at this story, it's just really interesting to find out and to learn how Frank McCann and the sit-in movement in Greensboro was really able to affect change. It's interesting though, maybe Frank McCann, it wasn't as much words, was it? It was more actions. But still, I feel like it was maybe a lack of words. When Frank McCann was being um, persecuted, when people were saying different things to the people, um, doing the sit-in movements in the lunchroom at the Woolworths. They could have spoken, but instead they didn't. One other area that I thought was really interesting for words inspiring change too, wasn't even the words of Frank McCann, but it was the words of that older white lady at the lunch counter who came up to Frank McCann. I really found Frank McCann's words inspiring there where he talked about, you know, when he first saw that older white lady walking up to him, he kind of assumed what she might be coming to. She is, he kind of assumed that she would be um, getting after him and, and telling him he was doing a bad thing for sitting at the lunch counter. But instead, she came up and said she's so proud of him. And that really inspired Frank McCann to be able to say, like he did in this story, you know, that inspired, um, Frank McCann said, that inspired me to make sure that I never assume anything about someone. I never judge someone. Um, until I really have the chance to talk to them. And that's so important for us all to consider and to remember that we don't judge anyone based on what we think they might be thinking or saying or feeling unless we actually take the time to speak with them. Anyway, we will be doing a new story today. And it is found in Sabas. So if you go back to the Sabas, the next story we'll be looking at today, and we'll be spending all of our time, will be the children of Birmingham. So if you could all go to Sabas and open up that story, the children of Birmingham, 
That'll be the story that we talk about today. I'm going to try to make this, uh, looks like my, my face got a little blurry here. So I'm going to try to see if I can focus that in a little better. Come on. There we go. Looking better now. All right, so the children of Birmingham, we're gonna be reading this story in class today. This is not a long story. It's not gonna take you a, a really long time to read, um, but we are gonna get the entire story read, actually not once, but likely twice. And I'm gonna show you what you're gonna be doing. For this story, we will be working in partners. Now, let me give you a rule, and our substitute's gonna make sure that that rule gets followed, and she'll let me know. So make sure that you guys take care of this and you work together in a professional way. Remember, you're trying to get your work done so that you don't have to have a ton of homework or anything like that. If you work successfully in class, you shouldn't really have much to do outside of class. So that's gonna be the goal for when you're working with your partner. Secondly, I would like you to choose a partner in class. I'm not here, so I can't put you with someone. Normally I would do that. But I would like to challenge you to try to choose a partner you maybe haven't worked with that much before, and I'm gonna make the rule, you need to try to choose a partner who is the opposite gender that you are. Yes, that means guys are working with girls. Now, I don't know about the exact number of people, you know, with virtual days and everything like that, if it's gonna work out perfectly. And if it does, you know, when everybody partners up, if there are some groups that have to be guys together or girls together, that'll be fine, but, Everybody, as far as we're able to, needs to partner up with someone who is the opposite gender as they are. That's just going to keep our groups working a little bit more successfully, I think. So please do that. You're going to be finding a partner. And then now I want to describe what you're going to do in your partner groups. Now, before I do that, I should probably talk to my virtual students. Virtual students, I understand. It's going to be very challenging for you to get that partner um, on the call. You know, our substitute can definitely, when this video is done, mute the, you know, Google Meet microphone here so that you're not being distracted by the groups working and partners here at, at school. And you potentially could talk to each other on the call, but I know that's not always so easy to do. So if you are virtual, it's likely you'll be doing this more by yourself. But let me show you what you, in fact, will be doing. There's two things you're going to do. The first step is to do a first read. Now, normally when we read something first, we annotate. And that's going to be no different today. It's just going to be different how we annotate. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to click on the Making Meaning tab right here in Savas, the Making Meaning tab. And then we're, you can see there's two different sections. And these will be the two sections we're doing today, first read and close read. If you click on first read, you will see that there is a chart here that you can open up. Open up the chart, please. All right, so here's the chart, and this chart is actually able to be typed right in. And you will that's what you'll be doing. You'll be turning this assignment in uh, before tomorrow. So right here in the first part of the chart, it says, notice the general ideas of the text. What is it about who is involved? Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You're gonna be writing your answers right, in, right there inside of the chart. Then you can see the next part right here. You're gonna annotate by marking vocabulary and passages you wanna revisit. Let's mostly just use this section right here, the annotate section, to try to find at least one or two words that are not as familiar. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, this story doesn't have high level vocabulary. But still, try to find one or two vocabulary words that you can add to this section right here. If we scroll down a little bit more on the chart, we come to the part that says connect ideas within the selection to what you already know and what you've already read. So in this part right here, you're gonna be writing, how does this story, the children of Birmingham, 
have a connection to other stories that we've read in this unit or other things that you might already have learned or know about the civil rights movement and the children's crusade in Birmingham. That's what you're gonna write in there. And then finally, you're going to be respond by completing a little summary of what this story was about. Comprehension check, don't worry about that. But in this section that says respond, you and your partner will create and write a summary of this story. That's what you're gonna do in this chart called first read. Of course, before you can do that chart, you're gonna to have to read it. But like I said, you and your partner together reading it, it won't take too long to read, probably somewhere in the six to seven minute range. Okay, so that was the first read. That's the first thing that you'll be doing in class today. The second thing you'll be doing was right underneath the first read, it's the close read. You guys know close read. It's annotate, question, and conclude. Normally, we just highlight things in the text and type it in. Today, though, we're gonna use a chart to accomplish this, and I will show you how that works. If you click the close read, there's another chart you can open. Here it is right here. So in this first section, it says, revisit sections of the text you marked during your first read. Read these sections closely, annotate, question, and conclude. What I'm gonna make you do right in here where it says add notes is I'd like you to write annotate, I'd like you to write question, and I'd like you to write conclude, all three of those parts, and then you're gonna type in under the annotation What's something that I noticed? What's something that stuck out to me? What's something that um, drew my attention in this story? You will then ask a question about it and you'll type in the question that you're asking and then you will write down two conclusions. So you only have to choose one thing to close read with your partner. And that's what you'll put in this section right over here. The next part over here, analyze the text. Think about the author's choices of patterns, structure, techniques, and ideas included in the text. Select one and record your thoughts about what this choice conveys. This one is very, it's gonna be good if you have a partner to talk about, but even if you don't, you can still accomplish this. What you're trying to look for here is what is some, some kind of literary device? Those things that we talk about every story, those, um, those things like similes or metaphors, the things like um, dialogue, things like punctuation choices, um, authors, authors uh, themes, different things like that. What are some different choices? What is one choice that the author made that you noticed and what did it do to the story or contribute to the story? That's what you'll type in there. And then last but not least, there's a quick write at the bottom where you will pick a paragraph from the text that grabbed your interest and explain the power of the passage. Now, class, I am looking for you in these charts to make sure that you are completing them you know, thoroughly. You're putting good, and good, thoughtful answers in. I really don't want to see little tiny one-line things. I want you to answer this thoroughly, completely, and successfully. Now, once you've finished all of the charts, remember, this is Sabas, so how do you save your work? You literally have to save your work by closing out the tab. As long as you're all working in class today and you all get this done today in class, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. When you finish with this work, I would expect it would take you most of class, the rest of class, to read this story not once, but to read the story twice. Because when you go back onto the close read, you're going to have to read it again. I know it seems a little weird to have to read a story twice, but you will. I would expect all of you to be reading it twice. You're going to read it once, do the one first read. Then you're going to read it again twice the second time looking for the close read and completing that. So that's really how I want it to go. And our substitute will be making sure that that's the way it goes as well. You're reading it once, doing the first read chart. Then you're reading it a second time with your partner and doing the close read chart. So I just want to make that very clear. But either way, when you finish up in your top right corner of your Sabas, there's that black turn in button. When you are completely done with both sections, the first read and the close read, you click turn in. Now, the only last thing I got to tell you guys is 
what if you don't get done in time? I mean, what if you, the, the bell rings for class today and you're not done with some of the chart? What you should do at that point then is, of course, X out a Savas, that will save your work. And then um, you can open it back up later and complete your work on at home. Now, if you're scared that Savas might delete your work, and I've seen it happen before, it has happened. So what some students do to guarantee that they're not gonna end up having their work deleted is they will type the answers to those different chart categories into a Google Doc and then paste them into Savas. That saves you the, the heartache of potentially losing your work. But if you can work all in class today and get it done, you shouldn't have to worry about that anyway. That's all you have to do today. So what I'm expecting everyone to do now is partner up. Remember, you're finding a partner of the opposite gender of you, and you are working very successfully with that person to get this job done, reading it once, doing the first read uh, chart on Savas here, and reading it a second time, doing the close read chart on Savas here. Work very successfully, students. Read this story and have a good day.